Hi, my name is Jackie Ford. I'm the CEO of the Wellbeing Alliance, and today I'm with Murdo Fraser, MSP. Hi, Murdo, how are you? Hi, Jackie, I'm well, thank you. First of all, Murdo, I want to thank you very much. Over five years ago, I came to, to both you and Malcolm Chisholm and Jimmy Dia, and I spoke about all the various cross party groups we had in the Scottish Parliament, but they all seemed to be looking at different disease areas rather than an overarching theme of health inequalities. And I just wanted to thank you for believing in that concept of bigger concept of health inequalities and, and, and convening um, a cross party group in the Scottish Parliament on that. Well, thank you. I mean, I think what's important about the cross-party group is it's a space to have broader ranging conversations than you could have in some of the other groups which are dealt dealing with a very specialist mm -hmm. area uh, of medicine. Um, and you can look at overarching issues such as, for example, the impact of, of poverty mm -hmm. on, uh, on health, uh, the role the voluntary sector plays in promoting health. Uh, and we can do that in a much more rounded way mm -hmm. than we could do if we, if we were breaking that down into a very sectional interest. So mm -hmm. I think it's been, been quite a success and I know it's, it's well regarded. That's fantastic. And the lovely thing about that is you can see the movement within the Parliament of the Health Committee going forward and doing an inquiry into health inequalities. And as you mentioned, a lot of the third sector organisations now looking to how they can help support the government and support the people in disadvantaged communities to improve their health, which is fantastic. Yeah. Now, well-being, what does well-being mean to you, Murdo? Uh, I suppose well-being means uh, being, uh, being, being whole, being a whole person, feeling, feeling you know, your life's together, that's, mm -hmm. that's your health, your physical health, your, your mental health. You know where you are, your your job satisfaction, your mm -hmm. financial status, your security, your family. You know if 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 you've got good well being, all these things are right. Okay, and with that good well being, do you think there's something as a, a parliament in Scotland and, and and a government that politics can help people with their general well being, and in what way can they help them? I think in in a whole range of different ways. Um, in the in the economy, energy and tourism committee, which which I chair, we're going to start doing some work in the autumn on work and well-being. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at uh, quality of work issues, uh, you know, around security, employment, around levels of pay, um, whether people are content in their work, whether they feel that their their, their job is satisfying. Mm -hmm. So 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 on an economic issue, on an employment issue, I think that's important. I think that's important in terms of societal issues where people live, people's family structure. Uh, in terms of housing, that's important. Mm. In terms of education, that's important. People feel they've got the, uh, the skills that, that they need to, to get on in life and do what they need to do. And of course, that's important in terms of health because uh, people need to have, have good health. Not everybody will have good health. Mm. Some, people, some people will, be, uh, will have long-term conditions, for example. But even so, they might have good well-being if they feel that their conditions are being properly managed and they're getting the support that they need. So there's a whole range of different policy areas where you know the Scottish Parliament could make a difference in improving uh, the general well-being of the people. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there sort of working well-being and, and it made me think about sort of the mental health of people working in environments where perhaps they are overworked, you know, stressed, etc, etc. Are there any moves within the Scottish Parliament to look at sort of mental health and workplace well-being? Will that be part of the package that you're reviewing? I think we'll touch on that now in inquiry. I mean, it's, you know, we're not the health committee, so it won't be the focus of our work. But right. I think what, what we're particularly interested in doing is looking at, for example, the impact of issues like underemployment, mm. uh, zero hours contracts, which we hear a lot about, um, low pay. You know, what, what, what are the impacts on individuals, not just in terms of uh, their, their employment uh, and their economic status, but in terms of um, their lives more generally. Uh, so is that impacting on their mental health? Is mm -hmm. that putting stress upon them? Is that putting stress on their families? Are there knock-on effects? So I think there's quite a lot we can we can probe into as, a, as an economy committee mm -hmm. that takes us down some of these routes. Mm -hmm. And when we, we consider that mental health, the importance of somebody's frame of mind when they're being given messages or public health messages or health messages, how important do you think it is for someone who's to be a recipient mm. of this with their sort of mental health and their frame of mind? I think there is an issue because often people just feel they're being talked at yeah. and, and you know, people are given a lot of information 
Um, and sometimes it's, it's, it's either too much or it's given to them at the wrong time or they just don't want to take it in. So I think in the way that we approach people who have got particular needs, particularly around mental health, that we've got to be much more sensitive uh, to individuals' needs and approach it perhaps in a much more holistic manner mm -hmm. uh, than we've done up until now. I love that because you spoke earlier as well about taking a holistic approach and seeing the whole person. That's so important because it's, it's quite common nowadays for people to be so busy in their heads and the caring professions that people are given labels rather than being seen as human beings. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it's a particular problem, I think, the way we do medicine in this country mm -hmm. where, you know, the gateway to the entire health service is, is your, your GP. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, the best will in the world, you're going to see your GP, you'll get a 15 minute appointment. And your GP, who's probably under a lot of time pressure and stress and running late, him or herself, is then very quickly having to um, decide what uh, he or she thinks is wrong with you and then pass you on to the next level. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a very difficult uh, route forward for many people in the health service. Maybe, maybe that uh, interaction with the health services is not the best way to approach things. Mm -hmm. As a society, we've become very busy-minded, haven't we? There's always two or three things at the one time, if not more, to juggle to live our lives. Myrtle, thank you very much for speaking with us today and thank you again for sponsoring our meeting next week in the Scottish Parliament on tackling public health um, interventions from the inside out. Thank, thank you. you. Pleasure.